Hello, this is Eddie with Fast Days of Planets Repair. Today we're going to do a review and uh, we're going to do a teardown. And um, I don't know, we're going to get our opinion on this uh, fuel regulator and maybe some things to change about it. Um, my, kind of my opinion on these uh, regulators is that you, you probably should, most things that you get from China, okay, or whereabouts, that, that, that kind of, you know, those kind of things, I think that maybe you should probably tear them down real quick and look at them and make sure that there's no, I don't know, metal shavings in the wrong place. Um, I've seen, you know, I've heard of a lot of people where they've had problems with, you know, anything that has like a diaphragm in it, you know, the diaphragm goes bad or is out of, uh, out of adjustment when you first get it. Um, uh, or maybe just seals, you know, the, the, the overings they use. I mean, we'll just say for instance, the overings for this isn't even an overing. It's a square you know gasket and I wouldn't use a square gasket on something that's going to be over you know 50 pounds of pressure I don't I don't agree with that um, but we're going to go into this um, we're going to do a tear down um, the thing comes in a box like this um, you get the fuel lines at the bottom this part of the, the, the this part of the foam sits on top all the fuel lines and this covers that up it comes in the package it comes in is, is very you know sound it's, it doesn't it don't have no um it, it doesn't look like it's going to break anything um i don't think there's any it don't, it's not going to beat up anything too much um now i don't think the fuel lines are rated for you know uh what is it flex fuel so just FYI, I would probably get you maybe some different connectors and, and get it set up for flex fuel if you're going to use it for flex fuel. Um, what I've done, what I have here is a, I, I've, I've got a truck, okay? I'm going to be running service in, but I'm also going to do a lot of the, you know, uh, kind of uh, sloppy stuff to it. You know, maybe put a turbo on it, that kind of stuff. But my the difference is, is mine's going to be a daily driver. I'm going to use it for service, okay? Um, and I want to, I want to have, I want to have some performance in my, my vehicle. Um, I'll, I'll say it like this, that when you run a service all the time, your car breaks, it breaks, they break. So to me, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you, you want, I'm going to enjoy it. If I'm going to, I'm going to keep breaking stuff on it, I'm going to break stuff all the time. I want to enjoy what I'm breaking. Um, uh, that's just my opinion. Um, if I'm going to put all the work into it, I think that, you know, I deserve that. I, I think that that's part of it. I think a lot of people um, should probably go that route, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, if you're going to be spending the fuel on it and everything, might as well make it, you know, make it where it's enjoyable to do all that with. Because, I mean, you're still going to have to do the repairs, you know, regardless if it's your fault or if, if it's just wear and tear. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that if, as long as you're doing... As long as you're doing a lot of what that guy's showing you, you know, um, Matt over there, he's showing you stuff that are rock solid parts, you know, that, you know, as long as you don't, you push them to the edge, as long as you're not pushing them on the edge constantly, then they're going to hold together for quite a while, probably get to the point of wear, you know, where they break up by wearing, you know, I know he blew a few apart, but that's because he was pushing them, you know, uh, if you keep it before that point, um, um, I, I, if you're, I think if you're, if you're looking at a motor that could, you know, hit, uh, you know, 900 horses before coming apart, I think that, um, you should easily do six without, you know, with little issues. But anyway, back to doing, taking this apart. Um, we're going to take this apart. We're going to look at it. We're going to see if there's, you know, anything that needs to be looked at, you know, maybe when you get yours, maybe you should do this already. Uh, we're going to look into that and see what, what you should look for on these. Um, and uh, one more thing before we do this teardown. My channel um, is that uh, they're, they're probably going to take away monetization out of it, which is going to make it where I'm just probably not going to want to post anymore. Um, but what here, here's the deal. Um, it, I'm going to, between now and... And uh, February 30th, I'm going to make a video a day from here till then, okay? 
what I need is subscribers. I've got I've got everything all I meet all criteria except for a thousand subscribers. I think the last time I looked it was at 290 something subscribers. So I I need subscribers, guys. Click that subscribe button, man. If, if you're even interested in what I'm showing you here, click that subscribe button for me, man. It, it will help me out so much. You have no idea, okay? Um, this is a, a taste of frustration. <laughs> So if you just, you click that, you, not, not the like button, with the subscribe button. Click that subscribe button, you know, and at the end of this video, if you don't like it, you can hit the, you know, uh, the don't like button. Just give me a subscription, man, and, you know, leave, you know, give me, give me these 30 days, man. And, and if I can't show you guys that, that I have something to give, then by all means, take the subscription off. But for the next 30 days, I'm going to show a lot of content. And I'm going to see if this can uh, work out for me. I, I like doing YouTube videos. I know the last couple months I've uh, kind of backed off. Um, but I plan on getting with this. Uh, I think the next 30 days I'm going to do a video a day. And then I'm going to guarantee you guys one video a week from there. Um, and I think I can give you guys a lot of good content. Uh, so... Please give me that, that, that subscri subscription um, and then tell me if you like the video after it's over with. And maybe I can give you guys some better better stuff here. But enough of that. Let's get on to this. All right. Now it comes with, it comes with uh, 390s, 390 degrees connectors here from a hose. Then you get your uh, your 6 AM feeding, okay? It comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the uh, 6 AM fittings. It gives one block off. It comes with, looks like uh, three of these bigger square seals and two of the smaller square seals. Uh, I imagine that's for JDM right there, something uh, for uh, fuel. I'm not sure what it's for. It does not come with this. This I had to have for my truck. And what this is, is a 5 sixteenths quick connect to uh, 6AN. And same here. And, but it's just the opposite. It's the female side and that's the male side. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off my uh, fuel rail on my truck. And uh, I'm going to bypass my fuel regulator, which we're going to get into that when we go to mount this. Whole other video. Um, I'm going to bypass that, and it's just going to be where it gets the full uh, pressure to the regulator, and then this is going to uh, go on down the line. So, but you get three sections of hose. get three sections of hose I know I've already been playing with this a little bit um, we get three sections of hose um, let's see well that'd be nice if I had a tape measure but I don't guys all right we're back okay again I don't have no way to measure this hoses but I'm gonna say that that one's two foot that one's like a foot and three inches, and that one's just less than a foot, maybe ten inches, okay, on the hoses. I do notice right away on these fittings that you're going to have to get, you're going to have to get yourself, that, that that's not going to work, okay. These square seals are not going to work. You're going to have to go get you some O-rings, okay, and, and in fact, you can go to Harbor Freight, I know nobody wants to hear that name, Harbor Freight. <laughs> um, but you can go to Harbor Freight and get you some O-rings, okay? I got the Viton O-rings, okay? The only one that my store carries. And let's see, which one did I use? It was the, I used these ones, which is this, the 10 
0.77 by 2.62 a a111 right there but anyway I used the a111 for my o-rings you see there and I'm using Vite and I think Vite is probably going to be the best way to go on this and if you watch you see there there's a little uh, the threads are countersunk okay which I don't know why this ain't what they give you to start with I mean, maybe they just don't they're, I don't know why they're even that's not even cheapening out that's like just not even doing it right like it's not, that's not even bothering to care is what that is because they're, they're providing seals they're just not providing the right exact ones um, and then you got the then you got the the joints here are, are countersunk on the joint so I mean it's set up for an o-ring I mean it, it's set up for an o-ring and now those seals right there are perfect they fit perfect in there you screw it on down and you get down to that seal which I want to put some lubricant on it but it goes right down in there it, it squeezes right down in the hole it's going to be a perfect perfect seal there's no reason not to use them other than maybe you know um i, I don't know how they do with which hopefully somebody else would chime in for this but i don't know how well they'll do with uh oh the flex fuel i don't know how, listen none of this stuff i don't know what it does with flex fuel and um, I, to be honest with you, I, I'm probably going to try it anyway, even if someone says something, because most of the people that say it don't work are trying to sell something. I, I hate to say it like that, but it's the truth. Most of the people that say it don't work, are, are they're not a tried and true, so I, I'm kind of just, you know, well, is it going to break down over a year? Is it going to break down over 10 years? Or is it just going to fall apart? That's the questions that they don't answer. So... If this thing will survive 10 years without breaking down, well, then uh, I'm going to probably use it for a little bit, and then we'll go and fix it. We'll come back to it. Um, at that point, 10 years, I don't even know if we'll be doing the same thing with the same situation at that point. Um, I know this ain't the right bit for this, oh well. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna back off the spring. The thing is, I don't. It's common knowledge that whenever you ship any kind of regulator or any kind of regulating device, okay, you ship it unloaded, okay. And what do they do to this regulator? They have it tightened up, which is kind of a not a good idea. So you want to back that regulator off all the way. Okay, before you even do anything with this thing. Back that regulator off. Now look, there's an O-ring. Of all things, an O-ring. Where, okay, now this spot, there probably should be a uh, square seal in this spot. That's what's stupid about this. This probably should get a square seal, not an O-ring. Alright, now we need another... I have a set of Allen heads, but I don't want to go and get it all out. If I don't have to. Alright. So we took out that bolt on that, uh, the, the adjustment screw out of it. 
watch this not be the right size <laughs> There we go. Now I would loosen them first all. Don't just pull them out all at once because you gotta think that things got diaphragm that's fragile. Diaphragm is pretty, it's pretty going to be pretty fragile, so you don't want to just pull all of them at once. You want to back them off evenly. So it don't just tear when it comes apart. It, it can just, you know, you can be stuck on one side or the other, and then you're going to start pulling them screws and just tear it. If you pull it evenly, then you can catch that kind of stuff, and it, it maybe even stop yourself from tearing your, you know, your gasket if you were to do this. At that point, I would say <laughs> I would uh, stop taking it apart and just let it go. got a spring it's got a little bit of lubrication on it which I'm gonna wipe that off and I'll put some different stuff on it because I don't uh, I'm not gonna like that lubrication you can see where they have that thing sealed at so yeah I don't like as you can see there's packing material inside this the the uh, the um yeah that's not gonna work Yeah, that needs to be all cleaned up. That's not going to be good. Now, it looks like they tried to clean up for any metal material there. Man, that's a little dinky hole. I don't know if that's going to be able to flow everything. That is a dinky dinky hole. Now, I might be wrong when I look at this, but I would think that you'd need to be able to flow a lot bigger than that size. And I'm trying to think of something to size that beside, but I would think it'd need at least the size of maybe that screw. And that's what size it is. Let's see here. What's something, another way to show you the size of this thing? I mean,. I mean, look at that. And what they're trying to make it seal against is this ball bearing, it looks like.
I wonder how much bigger we can get in that hole. So you guys that are having problems, I've seen some people posting that saying that it won't, it stops at like 80 PSI or something like that. But that's why, right there. Well, huh. I wonder how much bigger we can get. Because uh, I'm not sold on that. So here's what I'm planning on doing here. Let's see, what size bit? I want to get to where I can seal against that ball bearing, but I don't want to overtake that ball bearing. Okay. So I'll make some adjustments to this thing. I want it to flow more fuel through that. I need to have a way for this thing to return fuel back. And uh, uh, Matt, pay attention here, Bubba. You got one of these on your truck, I think. So um, you need to take it apart and drill this out. I'm gonna go find a drill bit. Okay, so let me explain what this would do. Okay. This would uh, make it where you adjust your, your pressure and say it was set at 50 PSI, okay? We'll say you set it up and it's set at 50 PSI. What this would do is, is if the setting... It'll give you a false positive, basically, at idle, okay? You would adjust it to where it's flowing enough fuel through it, okay? And then whenever you get an RPM, the pressure will drop. So, Matt, red flag, Bubba. Uh, look at this. Look into it. Um... Okay. Now keep in mind, I got to bevel this too, so I got to have enough room for the hole and the bevel to seal against. There's the end of that ball bearing. I think that's what I'm going with. So here we go. I'm going to do this and I'm going to come back and chamfer it. There's no way that that's enough. There's no way that that is enough. I'm 
And you got to think this is in terms of backflow. This isn't relief pressure. In other words, this isn't blow off. Okay. Like you build up pressure. I mean, this is blow off pressure, not uh, a regulated pressure. Like it lets it, pa uh, it, lets it pass a, a such cer certain amount of pressure. This is, it only let, so in other words, you're going to have, if, if it can't flow enough liquid by it, you're going to have a backup of pressure. So when you're idling and this thing does, and it's backing up, say, say it just backs up at 50 PSI, like the pump, because the pump is a steady stream. If the pump flows and this thing opens up at 50, it, it opens up and it just so happens 50 PSI is what it flows through that hole at that given rate, then it's not going to, it's not going to, you're not going to notice it. I mean, I, I don't know, but I'm going to tell you, that I don't think that that's a big enough hole. I just don't think that that's a big enough hole. So we're going to have to, I, I'm going to do what I have to do to make it, make me feel better. So. And you want to be as perpendicular as possible. Now I'll just go slow and steady, man. How about that? Okay, what I got here is some 120 grit sandpaper. I think I'm just going to take like a drill bit here. Set it on top of this. Spin it backwards. See if I can get this bad boy to seal.
Now what I did is I took my bit and ran it backwards. I didn't try to cut. I was just trying to make an even surface. I was just trying to make the surface even where the seal's against. And if you can see that hole now, okay, it's kind of chamfered. So, Now, I think that has more of a chance of flowing what we need. Let's see where this thing is touching at. Take a little bit of grease here, right on that spot there. Let's see where it's contacting at. I wiped all the grease off of this because it comes with grease on it. I don't know why on that side it shouldn't, but okay, there we go. Now when you get done with this, I would make sure all your metal shavings are gone. Don't let anything get in there. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself on that one. I think that that is a better job. Now, I'll go ahead and remove this while I'm here. We're going to put that gauge on it. Now I would like wash this. Make sure that you get every little thing out of it because once you get it, once you get to this point here, you're not there's no going back. That's the whole point of what we're trying to do is to make sure that everything is perfect on this. We're gonna put it on a car for freak's sake, man. But, um, I like that hole a lot better. I don't know if you can see it. I wish I could tell you what size this is. Maybe you can. Well, I don't have any idea where that stopped at. Well, anyway, what we're doing is, is we're cleaning up, we're cleaning all the grease off of all the components on this. So we can put it back together. Um, I like, I like this stuff. Um, use it for brakes, uh, use it for electrical connections, <laughs> but is anything I don't think this stuff's good for. I would uh, take a second and you see this end right here, you see it's got a groove on it. You see this little groove right here on it. I would take a second and grind this to a point a, a ball if you can it's already left grooves in that which is not a good thing there 
there's some flash right here. I'll get rid of that. I've got most of that flashing off of there. I tried to sand this down a little bit too so I didn't hang it up. All right. Get and clean out all your grease. Now, if you notice, what seals that thing up is the grease, is the thread sealer. So what you're going to do is put thread sealer on your threads. Another thing that they didn't didn't do. I haven't looked at the Aeromotive one, but I guarantee you the Aeromotive one has a bigger port on it for that uh, return. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I can't get the picture centered for you guys. It's kind of hard to do this on the open sometimes. I think that alone right there, doing that drill in that hole out there will make a big difference on how these things are working for people. Thread sealant. Now this had thread sealant on I could tell after I took it apart it had sealant on it so I would still go ahead and put new thread sealant on it because you don't know what kind of stuff they use whatever it was it was hard it was more like Loctite than it was actual um, like a like the sealant that I'm used to Which I'd rather something like this that's malleable seal in a vibrating climate, you know, not something that's going to crack. Let me just wipe it up. There's that. Okay. Now, after thinking about it for a little bit, I kind of 
change my plans on this one, on this piece. I'm going to change the O-ring to a Viton one. I just don't like these seals, man. Maybe I should use a square one on this. If it had a countersunk or something, I would say use this, but I'm kind of wondering. This is the one place that I would say probably use a square seal. It makes sense to use it. Nah. I don't think there's a good way to seal this. And I don't, I don't feel comfortable using the thread sealer on it either. So I'm going to go ahead and use the... Oh, a bite and ring on it. Let's see, do I go in with these? So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to use this lubricant. Okay, we're going to be liberal with it. Okay. Because this is the vacuum side, I guess pressure side too, of, the, of this thing. We don't want it leaking here. Because that would mean our fuel pressures would be off whenever that would be you'd have another leak spot under boost it would leak out at boost I probably should use this stuff because that's the stuff that's gonna hold up for a long well both of these things will hold up both both the both of these things are gonna hold up for a long time this is a you know silicon uh, lubricant paste and this one you know um, I don't even sure what the base on that is but I know that 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 stuff is gonna sit there without drying okay now Take some of this and slop it down the bottom of this thing. Like that. Just kind of slop it down in there. You see that? And then we'll take our uh, washer. Put just a hair bit on that hair bit on there on that side. Okay. You want to lube the sides too because this spring moves.
Hope you're all with me here. So then. This stuff ain't gonna hurt a little bit, you know, fuel to get on or whatever. Float past it or anything. This moves too, so you want all that lubricator on the side of it. What you want to do is make sure that's centered right into that valve and make sure that this thing you try to flatten this thing out as much as possible don't get if you got any anything on there right now is the time to clean it up because i just felt something so i'm gonna be cleaning this thing up Well, the seal on this diaphragm was just a, uh, it's just a, um, you know, um, I'm sorry guys, I can't think. <laughs> Now the cylinder's diaphragm, it don't have no, you know, groove it goes into. It just, it's made to sit in between the, the uh, screws. You know, it's made to sit in between the screws. And it's got to be centered on the valve part. Okay. So, what you want to do, probably here, is get your, get that to work for two, just a hair. Get your spring work for two, just a hair there. Well, I guess you won't even need to do that. Just go ahead and back it back off. Just flush. And then what you want to do is go ahead and get your screws ready. Because your screws are going to be your centering factor. Like how you center that seal. The screws and the actual seals, it's the the... The valve in there, the um, I don't know how did you want to call that the the needle and seat inside there. That's going to be your, you know how it's going to seal.
Now notice I'm just trying to start them and get that seal centered in there. I did the cross from each other first. this thing up way even first. I just want to say too tight, like you know, you don't want to be, you know, stripping stuff out, but you want to, you want the stuff to be tight, so. Well, there's that. We got it back together, guys. That's return side. This is pressure side. This is return side. Um, so if you were using this before the uh, the regulator, or if you were doing this before the um, um, if your return was before the injectors, okay. In other words, you'd be going in or out these ports uh, for, like uh, in for supply out for your uh, your your injectors and then return at the bottom okay uh, if you're using this after the injectors you're gonna go in block off port and return okay 
And what I'm doing is I'm planning on doing uh, return after the injectors. So what we're going to do is we'll find our block off here. I'm going to put them on the other O-rings on it. the old o-ring that one actually was an o-ring it was not a uh, uh, but it was a rubber o-ring not a viton o-ring viton ones are just going to be a lot more you know they're going to handle a lot more pressure and they're i think they're chemical rated but i don't know what chemicals you'd have to look that up i've heard of other people using viton o-rings in this situation so um and i know that the the other ones aren't going to be good enough, in my opinion, anyway. So that's the side I want to use it on. You can you can block off this side or this side, and it'll work. So now you see that. Hopefully you can see that. But you can see that O-ring right there. Now once I tighten this down, the O-ring is going to go. Actually, I, you should lubricate your O-rings, guys. <laughs> Get you some of that grease. Okay, put it on there just a little bit. A little dab it, do you? Okay. There you go. Now, if you pay attention, if you noticed before, that sticked out, that stuck out, okay? So in other words, the seal was between this and the body. Now the seal is between, or it was, it's between the nut and the body. Now the seal is between the shank part of this and the body, which is actually a better seal. It doesn't move whenever you're, you know, it won't move around very easy. Again, a little dab, yeah, a little dab will do you. Just put it in the bottom. You don't have to caveman that. You don't have to make sure that that thing is so tight that, you know, you start breaking stuff. Just, you know, get it surface tight and good and tight. The o ring is going to do all the work. I mean, you don't want it rattling loose or nothing, but, you know, like I said, the o ring will do all the work. Get you on one of those. Put your o ring on it. Now guys, if you don't, I just got to thinking here. I just told you to, to go and drill on your your uh, regulator. Um, if you guys don't feel comfortable drilling that regulator, by all means, don't do it. I felt very comfortable in doing that. I knew that I could get it done without damaging anything. Um, if you're never going to go and do more than one pump on, on this, or um, I don't know, I think that this... I don't know how much that that size of hole will run. I, I don't know if it'll, if it'll work good enough. But I know the current regulator is on my truck. Because I got one of them 450s on my current regulator on my truck. Um, which is the... It's got an on the fuel rail. and But it's just a little pinhole, man. Now this is a bigger hole. But nonetheless, it's still. I don't think that's enough. You know, to, to, you know, regulate that much fuel. I mean, we're talking a return of 5 sixteenths, you know. That, that's not going to, that has. I don't even think that has a chance. And for that matter, it's not going to do it well. 
it's gonna either it's gonna open all the way up and to, to, to open up to get to get you know fuel through there or is this one is just going to it's gonna hover you know um, I like this better and um, Another thing, if you're returning, if you're if you're doing like what I'm fixing to do, okay, this regulator is going to be more of a, um, I'm not regulator, this gauge is going to be more of a, oh, uh, you're going to, you're going to use this gauge loosely, okay, very, very loosely, which maybe most people probably do, um, like you know zero psi where it should be you know 50 you know then you, you might have an issue um, but I'm not gonna set my truck with this gauge um, what I mean by that is you, you can't you can't get an accurate enough reading on this gauge in the place that it's at unless you are well I don't even think you can I, I guess either way this is more of along the lines just tell you that you have an issue, but I wouldn't use this for a device to set your, your pressure at. Um, Sure does look pretty though, doesn't she? Well, I found this on accident. Well, I noticed that the the hole for the 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 oil fill for the gauge was cocked cocked to the side, so I kind of tweaked on a little bit because this was sitting to the right. The, instead of sitting top, instead of that hole being on top, it was sitting to the right. And I was like, well, that probably is going to leak out, so I turned on it a little bit and then I noticed that this come loose from that and there was that o-ring right there replaced the o-ring put it back together just saying I'm gonna get me one of these guys right here okay looks like a either a 4.47 by 178 or a 3 Sorry, a three three point six nine by one point seven eight. Okay, a zero zero seven, a zero zero eight. But I'm gonna slap that on there. Put it on there. I'm gonna put it back on. I'll clock it right. I would probably recommend taking the seal and maybe going and getting like a seal for like a uh, like the diaphragm out of this and go get a get go find one from a um, oh what's that brand Aeromotive I'll probably go get an Aeromotive one and replace that diaphragm with an Aeromotive diaphragm. I bet you it's going to be shaped better. OK. 
because I, I think this one's a stretched fit. Like it's a stretch to fit that spot um, and just cut. And um, I don't think that's going to hold up very well. Well, I think it's sealed. I mean, like we got a sealed, you know, setup here. Uh, see here let's go over what else what else it comes with here. I really don't want to make up my hoses until I, I'm ready oh I want to go over these that's right oh look at that there's a way to get these apart well this 90 just so you guys know this 90 is from um, ooh, now that I think about it okay this is from um, I hate that when you're hit when you just go blank man I would go blank so often <laughs> uh, so much mush up in there. God. <laughs> uh, but um, this is this right here is from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. Jeez, that took so much to get out of there. Um, I wonder if there's another. Is there a 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. on the other side, and I don't know what this is to. What is that to? So I got all that. Huh. I don't need that. I'm not going to need much of any of these things, any of these others, except for maybe these two. I'm going to use probably this one. I might make me a bracket to get it over with. We'll see. I think about coming off my uh, my brake booster, which is what I've seen people do. Come off the brake booster with it. You know, run off the back side. I'm super excited, man. I can't wait to get it on there. Um, so tomorrow's the day, man. We're going to get this thing done. Uh, I'm going to put that on tomorrow. Now I've heard people say that these things leak, but what I'm wondering is, is if it's just a, if it's just the freaking O-rings in them, which I don't know how to get them apart. Push them in and get them to go. Now that's not budging. That sucks too, man. I bet you could just, I bet you, all you have to do right there is replace that O-ring. I bet you that's a good, man. All right. I give, I toss in the towel. I imagine I'm going to have to replace these. Uh, from what I've heard, people say that they leak. I don't know where. I'm going to guess it's right here. But um, I don't know how to get those out. If I could get these out, then I could probably fix it. I 
think you got to pull them apart and do it. Just do it. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this. Um, I got my table on tore apart here. Um, I'm gonna cut this video out again, guys. I uh, I like doing YouTubes. Okay. Um, I can't, but I, I don't think that I, I want to keep going with it unless, you know, basically unless I'm going to get paid something. I mean, come on. Um, I don't, um, I, I think that, you know, I like sharing information um, that I know. Um, but I think that you should get rewarded for, for that kind of stuff sometimes, you know. Um if you don't want to, you don't want, if there's no reward for sharing that kind of stuff, then I don't think there's any good reason to share it. Um, you know, you share it with family members or something like that, but you get rewarded because, um, you know, they, they give you, you know, you get stuff in return on that. You know, they, they show you, they share stuff with you, you know, they help you, you know, it's not, but you know, if you're outside the circle, if you're not a friend, you know, then you know you you should you know you should just compensate people for that i mean i know that there's just today okay my personal because I, I believe in this so much there was a guy that it was at the auto parts store or, or a performance shop okay i should say and i gave him 10 bucks just for his just for information because i was looking into getting some lines and connectors and uh, they wanted a lot of money for them and i didn't realize that they cost that much until i um went and talked to him about it um so i give him 10 bucks for his time you know give him a tip whatever and i think that I, I highly believe in that um you know you should i think i think there's too much of that going on right now that people just look at that and they think that that stuff is free i come to tell you right now that i went through i've been through school and I've been, and I've had all this, I've had to have experience, okay? When I say experience, the, the people don't get what, I think some people don't understand, because I didn't until I have it, okay? The thing is about experience, okay? There's a few choice words I could say. Experience um, is a teacher, okay? Experience is hard. It's hard knocks, okay? I guess that's a good term for it uh experience is hard knocks okay when you do something wrong and you realize that that's not the right way to do it and then you get to go and take the repercussions for what you just did okay that's experience all right if you do something right constantly you don't know that you're doing it right okay experience is when you do something wrong and you learn from it Okay, that is experience, and I have have I have a lot of experience. Okay, and from that experience, I know how to do things right the first time, and cut the right corners. Okay, in places because of those experiences. Okay, just like I told you a minute ago about the you know whether or not I should use this or use that. That's just going to be an experience for me because. We got to find out now what what is going to let that seal, okay? And I guarantee you, whenever you're going to find out is what's going to make that seal right is going to be whenever you got that thing under pressure and you blow a motor or something like that. That is experience, okay? That is what experience is. Whenever you do something that is something so simple, okay, and you didn't know what to use, okay, but you just go past that point anyway without g grabbing the information. Okay, that is experience. Okay, because you got to learn. You you got to learn the hard way. Okay, it, it, it's now you can get you can get educated on stuff, and that's not the same as experience. Okay, experience comes with time and effort. Okay, and now I'm getting experience with YouTube because. Um, I've spent a little bit of time with it and now they're trying to, um, take me off of, you know, the program again, you know, take me off the program, you know, whenever 
I jumped through the hoops when I was supposed to jump through, and now they feel like I need to jump through more hoops. Okay, fine. We're going to go do that. Okay. Um, I'm going to go, like I said, the next 30 days and, you know, hit the subscribe button. I'm not going to keep, you know, harping on this for the, for every video. So just so you hear me this time though, I want to hear, I want everyone to hear me. I'm, I'm going to put out a video a day and, um, you know, hopefully you guys like them. Hopefully it was worth it. You know, I'm going to cut them the best I can and. And but it, and it's gonna be a, some of it's gonna be a little bit of a chop, you know. Um, I know this video right here was kind of a throw together, but I think it got some good information out of it. I, I think really good information on this one, because I think this is gonna be a really nice regulator now. I think this is a really really nice regulator now. I might have to change out the the, the diaphragm on it, and I bet you can go to a diaphragm from uh, from an aeromotive diaphragm, okay? But I think this is a really nice regulator now. I think there, I don't think there's anything that's going to keep this thing from working very good. Um, that return man was a big. I think that that's a big deal, huge deal, huge. But um, again, um, a like and subscribe. Um, I appreciate everyone up until this point that has helped me, and I appreciate everybody that comes along and helps me from here on out um and i like i said i really want to share with you guys everything but if i don't if i don't get through this i won't uh, i'm not going to keep after the 30th if i don't have enough subscribers i'm going to stop uh, that I'll, I'll be honest with you i think that's going to stop me and i'm not trying to cry to you because i don't like watching people cry either on on youtube um i'm just trying to share with you guys what it's going to take me for me to keep going um on here but um so please 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 again subscribe <laughs> hit that button for god's sake <laughs> all right um i'll see you guys later uh tomorrow i'm gonna put out another video again next day i put out another video and i'll see you later